today. Now we are going to have a new story. The day Jimmy's boa ate the wash. Now before we read the story, we are going to study the vocabulary of the story. But before that, I want you to stand and let's have a warm-up dance entitled High Hopes. Hey everyone, hey everyone. Do, you love, do you love dancing along with Kids Bob at home? Follow along Follow to this along exciting warm-up so, warm so you're ready to dance with Kids, kids Bob all day long. All day long. Don't worry, Don't we have plenty of freestyle sections, sections so you can let so loose. We get to freestyle free all, the all the time, on tour, on tour and in music and videos. Music. We do this warm-up so when there is a choreography, we are ready to make up our own moves on the spot and show you our own personal style. Come dance with us.
So that was a wonderful dance. Now you can have a practice after this lesson. You can go back. Now let's proceed to the vocabulary of the story. Now I want to ask you a question. What animals can you see in the picture? Yes, there are so many animals, but there is a big animal wherein those kids are holding on. What is that animal? Exactly, it is a snake, but that is not a, 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 that is not a, a small snake. It is called a boa. Have you seen a real one? Have you seen a real snake in your life? I'm scared. Snakes are dangerous. So you need to be very careful when you see a snake. Okay. So from our vocabulary, but we need to learn about what is the genre of the story. And who is the author of the story? Now, let's learn about the book. Let's have a short summary of the story. What is the story all about? Can you read? Now, this is a story about a school trip to a peaceful, peaceful farm that turns wild when Jimmy's pet boa constrictor escapes. And the author is Trinka Hicks Nobles. And pictures by Stephen Kellum. Now let's have a short review about what is an author. An author is a person or the one who writes the stories. Well, the person who draws the pictures is called, very good, an illustrator. Please don't forget the difference between an author and illustrator. Now, let's learn some information about the author of the story. Who is Trinka Hicks Nobel? Now, Trinka Hicks Nobel grew up on a small farm in Michigan with six brothers and sisters. She studied art in Michigan. She has lived in Virginia, Rhode Island, and New York City. Now, she lives in New Jersey with her husband and daughter. Other books by Trinka Hicks Noble are Jimmy's Bow Upon the Spec, Jimmy's Bow and the Big Splash Birthday Bash. Now you can also read the following stories. Now what is the genre of this story? Yes, the genre of this story is again a fantasy story. Can you tell me what is a fantasy story? Great! A fantasy is a story about events that cannot happen in real life. And we are going to look for the animals that can do things the real animals cannot do. Just like this. The pig wants to or likes to read. So, in real life, an animal or a pig cannot read. So, this is a fantasy story. And for the setting, it is a setting that may be different from the real world. Now, let's begin with the vocabulary. These are the vocabulary. Number one, boring. Number two, duct. Number three, sense. Number four, supposed. Number five, tractor. Now let's repeat it again. 
twice. Let's read it twice. Boring, boring. Duct, duct. Sense, sense. Suppose, suppose. Tractor, tractor. Wonderful. What is the meaning of each vocabulary? Now for your glossary time, of course, if you have your reading book, you can just open your book and go to the glossary and when you see the word, get ready to find the word in your glossary. So what do you mean by the word boring? I think you know this word already. Can you give me a sentence using the word boring? Do you feel bored right now? Yeah, I do understand. But you can do other things that will make you happy and not feel bored. So when we say the when we say boring, it means not interesting or not exciting. Of course, when you feel bored, you might sleep or not interested into that thing and you will not listen or watch it. For example, the business meeting was really boring. Say the word once again, boring. Next. Number two, can you read the word? Yes, it's correct. Duck. Duct. For example, this means bent down suddenly. Look at this picture. You can bend down suddenly or duct whenever you play. Just, just not to go to that place or you don't like to hit by that particular thing. Just like that picture. Or during your, the earthquake drill, you can just bend down suddenly or duck. For example, Tommy ducked and the egg hit Marion in the face. So when Tommy ducked, the egg hit Marion, not him, because he bent down. Just to avoid the egg. Say the word once again, duct, duct, very good. Sense, sense, what does it mean? When we say sense, it means make sense. Just like when you are having a conversation or a dialogue or talk, when you're talking to someone or somebody, sometimes you need to, to listen carefully and try to connect what will be your answers to the questions or to the conversation related to what are you talking about. Does it make sense? Is it connected to the topic? So, for example... If a word doesn't make sense when you are reading, look at it again. Another meaning for the word sense is that when you're going to read something or if, when you're going to read a book and if you don't understand, then try to read it again. Try to understand what does it mean. Say the word once again. Sense. Sense. Very good. Let's go to the next. Number four. Can you read the word? Okay. Suppose. Suppose. Now what does it mean? This word means think or imagine. Think or imagine. For example, the children are supposed to listen to the sound of the fireman's tank. 
Now, when we say the word suppose, you need to somehow do it or follow or imagine or think that you're going to do that thing. You are supposed to listen to the teachers. You are supposed to respect other people. You are supposed to be quiet. You are supposed to eat healthy foods. So it's up to you. When we say the word suppose, you need to think about it. You need to imagine it. You need to follow it. You are supposed to do this one or do this thing. Okay? Say the word once again. Suppose. Suppose. Very good. Now, later, I want you to use this vocabulary in your own sentence. Next word. Tractor. Tractor. I know you know this word already. When we say tractor, it is a farm machine. Tractor. This is a very helpful machine to the farmers. This is an old tractor. Tractor. Very nice. Now, let's read and remember. Those are the vocabulary from the story, The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash. Number one. Try to read the word, the vocabulary twice, and the meaning once. Boring, boring, not interesting or exciting. Number two, ducked, ducked, bent down suddenly. Number three, sense, sense, meaning as in make sense. Number four, suppose, suppose. To think or imagine. Number five, tractor, tractor, a farm machine. Very good. Now let's evaluate your comprehension or your understanding about the vocabulary. So let's have a short review. Now, first is you're going to say the words. Number two, you're going to read the sentence. And number three, you're going to fill in the blank where you can just tell me what will be your answer. Are you ready? Let's begin. So these are the choices. And this is the picture. And this will be the sentence. So you're going to say the words. Read the sentence and try to answer. Get the correct answer. Say the correct answer to complete the sentence. Boring. Sense. Tractor. Duck. Suppose. The children had to plan to go into the fire safe house. Very good. Your answer is... Dot. Great. Let's read again the sentence. The children had to talk to go into the fire safe house. Wonderful. Next. It doesn't make blank that this lion has wings. This is a very easy sentence. Awesome. The answer will be sense number three look at this one i'm not a lion i'm a griffin okay number three. Oh, look at the picture this is already a clue and what will be your right your answer the farmer is riding his tractor number four I sense the baby and his dog were really tired. Sense. No. The 
five. Oh, I'm sorry, I already clicked the answer. It is boring waiting for the children to come, said Santa. It's just like it's a different way. It should be the children who will be waiting for Santa to come to their houses, right? Not Santa will be waiting to you. Okay. I'm so bored. Okay. Next picture. Now you're going to match the meaning to the word. Alright. So there are only five vocabulary words and it is very easy for you to understand because we already reviewed the vocabulary and, it, and their meanings. Number one, I'll give you the answer and for numbers two to five, you'll be the one to answer it, okay? Number one, suppose and the answer will be think or imagine. Of course, number two, tractor is a farm machine. How about thought? What do you think will be the correct answer? Is it A, not interesting or exciting? Is it letter B, bent down suddenly? Or letter C, doubt, meaning as it makes sense? Okay, very good. The answer will be letter B, bent down suddenly. For number four, boring. I know you know the answer. Exactly, you got it right. When we say boring, it's letter A. Not interesting or exciting. For number five, sense, of course, there, be, there is only one last letter. So the answer will be letter C, meaning as it makes sense. Okay, for the story. Now, let's have a short video animation about the story the day jimmy's bow ate the wash before we go to the proper story for our next lesson okay now you, you need to watch this one and listen <laughs> Your class, class trip, trip to the farm. To the farm. Oh, oh, boring. boring. Kind, kind of dull. dull. Until, Until the cow started, started crying. crying. A cow? A cow? Crying? crying? Yeah. yeah. You see, a haystack, a haystack fell on her. But a haystack doesn't just fall over. Does if the farmer crashes into it with his tractor? Oh, come on. A farmer wouldn't do that. He would if he were too busy yelling at the pigs to get off our school bus. What were pigs doing on the bus? Eating our lunches. Why were they eating your lunches? Because we threw their corn at each other. And they didn't have anything else to eat. Well, that makes sense. But why were you throwing corn? Because we ran out of eggs. Out of eggs? Why were you throwing eggs? Because of the boa constrictor. The boa constrictor? Yeah, yeah, Jimmy's, Jimmy's pet, pet boa, boa constrictor. constrictor. What was Jimmy's pet boa constrictor doing on the farm? Oh, he brought, he brought it to meet all the farm animals. <laughs> but the chickens didn't like it. You mean he took it into the hen house? Yeah. And the chickens started squawking and flying around. Go on, go on, go on. What happened? Well, one hen got excited and laid an egg. And it landed on Jenny's head. The hen? No, the egg. And it broke. Yucky. All over her hair. 
What did she do? She got mad because she thought Tommy threw it. So she threw one at him. What did Tommy do? Oh, he ducked and the egg hit Marianne in the face. So she threw one at Jenny. But she missed and hit Jimmy, who dropped the boa constrictor. Oh, and I know. The next thing you knew, everyone was throwing eggs, right? Right. And when you ran out of eggs, you threw the pig's corn, right? Right again. Well, well, what finally, finally stopped, stopped it? it. Well, well, we heard, we the, heard the farmer's, farmer's wife, wife screaming. screaming. Why, Why was she screaming? screaming? We never, never found out because Mrs. Stanley, Stanley made us get on the bus. And we, and we sort, sort of left, left in a hurry, hurry. Without, without the boa constrictor. constrictor. I bet, I bet Jimmy was Jimmy sad, was sad because, because he left his pet, pet boa constrictor. Oh, not really. We left in such a hurry that one of the pigs didn't get off the bus. So now he's got a pet pig. Boy, that sure sounds like an exciting trip. Yeah, I suppose. If you're the kind of kid who likes class trips to the farm.
Now that's the end of the story. It is a funny story, isn't it? Now I do remember when I was in middle school. It is re is it, it is a real story. During my birthday, on that day, my friends when I went outside the school gate, my friends threw eggs in my face. It is like they they made fun of me and they wanted to make fun because it is my birthday. So I remember because when I saw the eggs, it was really unforgettable for me. Now we can continue talking about this funny story in our next in our next lesson. Okay? So for your homework, you need to answer the vocabulary test and you need to watch and listen again to this video. So I hope you all enjoyed our lesson for today and I hope that you will do your homework. Have a great day. I miss you and see you soon. The end.